Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a couple of wacky kids in love that love doing some reaction videos together. Yes, we do. And so we're checking out a new channel uh, that we were uh, told to check out. It's called Lemino and Let Me Know. And so we also asked our patrons to vote on which video we should check out from this channel. And they voted on the, the Cicada 3301 uh, Internet Mystery. So it's not something I really am super familiar about, uh, but... I mean, you know, that's why we're watching this video. We're going to learn more about it. I don't know about this video, but when I was a kid, I would come home with backpacks full of cicadas. So I'm very excited to see what this is about. <laughs> um, my mom tells everybody the story of like when I was a kid and I was obsessed with cicadas because in Illinois, where I grew up, they come around like once every, what is it, seven years or 17 years? I think or, 17 years. 17. Think. Anyway, when I was a kid, it was like one of the years when they were out. And so I would come home from preschool with literally a backpack full of cicadas because I thought they were so cool. These bugs were just awesome in my mind. That's my story on cicadas. Probably bears no relevance to this, but I'm very excited to see what this is about. Yeah, but she, you know, she's a bug collector. There you go. Just let me know. On the 4th of January, 2012, a user on 4chan posted this image to the site's infamous B or random board. The anonymous author, who went by the four-digit pseudonym 3301, challenged users to uncover a message hmm. hidden within the image. Okay. Unbeknownst to those who stumbled across it, someone had just set in motion one of the most elaborate scavenger hunts the internet has ever seen. Hmm. Within minutes of the image being posted, someone discovered that by opening the file using a text editor, an appended string of readable text could be found. The string contained a cipher that, once deciphered, formed a link to yet another image. At first, hmm. this appeared to be a dead end, but using an application known as OutGuess, users were able to extract hidden information embedded within the first image. Hmm. The extracted information what? led to a subreddit, which in turn contained information about the book. The book, along with a code, could then be used to uncover a phone number that, when called, played this pre-recorded message. Very good. You have done well. There are three prime numbers associated with the original final .jpg image. 3301 is one of them. You will have to find the other two. Multiply all three of these numbers together and add a .com on the end to find the next step. Good luck. Wow. Goodbye. Can't be people figure this this out. By the following day, the initial image had been reposted all over the internet. How did, how did I have never heard about this before? Because <laughs> we've never heard in this category. A growing community of armchair detectives sought to unravel I'm this elaborate puzzle, mm. but no one was quite sure what to make of it. What was the puzzle for? Who was behind it? What happens when you reach the end? Some naturally dismissed it as an elaborate joke, while others perceived its complexity as evidence against it being the work of a mere troll. Before long, rumors began to circulate that this could be the work of some secret society or intelligence agency, with the intent of recruiting individuals proficient in cryptography, steganography, and other related fields. Yeah, kind of makes sense. Of course, it was nothing but a rumor. The two missing numbers mentioned in the recording proved to be the dimensions of the original image. After multiplying the width and height with 3301 and using the product as a web address, users were taken to a website. The website consisted of a countdown as well as an image of a cicada. When the countdown reached zero, the page was updated with a list of coordinates. The coordinates pointed to locations around the globe, 14 locations in five different countries. It was now up to participants living near the specified coordinates to rise from their comfortable armchairs and then <laughs> outside. Those who believed Cicada to be the work of an organization now felt their beliefs had been justified. In their opinion, only some international collective possessed the means and resources to create a scavenger hunt of this magnitude. Yeah. This was not the work of your average troll. No, this had to be something else. At each location was a poster with a cicada symbol and a QR huh. code. On the bike shelter over here. See, I got it got right there. Oh. You can see the corners, I, as you say, I just kind of ripped it off. The code it off. linked to an image. To find the it. image contained a riddle, the riddle led to a book, and the book led to a website. 
but here the puzzle took an unexpected turn. Only a select group of first arrivals to this website were accepted into the final stage of the puzzle. The site eventually closed down with a message, we want the best, <gasps> not the followers. Oh, the journalists were Ouch. also warned not to collaborate with others nor to share the details of this private stage of the puzzle. Well, uh, given that we know this, it's safe to say that not everyone heeded that word. <laughs> but those who did, presumably advanced through the final stages before reaching the very end of the puzzle. Do we get to know what that was? No, nope, that's it. That's a video. After nearly a month of silence, an image <laughs> appeared on the subreddit announcing the conclusion of the puzzle, and just like that, the hunt was over. Cicada had supposedly found the highly intelligent individuals they were looking for, and whatever happened to them is a bit of a mystery, but more on that in a moment. The complete lack of an explanation was perceived by many as confirmation that the puzzle had been nothing but a wild goose chase intent on wasting everyone's time. Hmm. After all, questions raised by the original image remained unanswered. What was the puzzle for? Who was behind it? What happens when you reach the end? Just said they're looking for highly intelligent individuals. However, as it later turned out, this was only the beginning. Clever. Whomever mm -hmm. was behind this intricate game had the foresight to include an authentication code known as a PGP signature along with every clue. This allowed users to verify that an image or message was actually from Cicada, as like opposed to some there? imposter seeking to derail or hijack the puzzle. Cicada had repeatedly warned of such false paths and insisted that any message lacking a valid PGP signature should promptly be disregarded. That's why this image, posted exactly a year and a day after the first, provoked such a frenzy. After a year of lackluster imitations, this image finally right, matched the official mm -hmm. PGP signature. Cicada was back, and it was time for round two. Huh. The second puzzle was not too dissimilar from the first. The image enclosed a message, the message led to a book, the book produced a link, and gradually the puzzle unfolded. At one point, a recording titled The In-Star Emergence was uncovered. Another clue led to a cryptic Twitter account, which then led to an image. The image proved vital to the progression of the puzzle, but the inclusion of this runic alphabet would remain a mystery runes. for quite some time. Much like the first puzzle, the second swelled into the physical world when a list of coordinates compelled participants to once again take to the streets in search of enigmatic posters. This time it was eight locations in four different countries. But eventually the trail went cold once again. Another select group of first arrivals have been accepted into a final, private stage of the puzzle. Unlike the first puzzle, the second did not conclude with an official message from Cicada. The train hmm. merely went okay. cold, and Cicada vanished once more, leaving us no closer to an explanation. However, this was still not the end. At the beginning of 2014, it was time for round three. Once again, the image enclosed a message, the message led to a book, the book produced a link, and suffice it to say, it was more of the same. Except this time, the puzzle seemed to revolve around a strange book. The book was titled Liber Primus, meaning first book in Latin, and was evidently written by Cicada. The runic alphabet hmm. uncovered in 2013 finally made sense, as the book was primarily written in runes. Even so, clever. the meaning of the translated pages were cryptic at best. The book consisted of various philosophical and ideological ideas and appeared to be their manifesto. Many have since compared the strange writings to that of a cult. Nevertheless, the book also comprised a myriad of clues and codes. For example, this page advised participants to seek out a website on the deep web, but the site remains undiscovered. 
Another page led to a website containing yet another recording titled Interconnectedness. significant portion of the book has yet to be translated. The runic text on some of the pages appear to be obfuscated by layers of encryption that has yet to be decrypted. Of the 74 pages featuring runes, only 19 have been successfully translated. Wow. As 2015 came and went without the launch of a new puzzle, Many came to suspect the Liber Primus had to be completed if Cicada was to return. This was more or less confirmed at the beginning of 2016, when Cicada encouraged a re-examination of the book. More than four years have now gone by with minimal progress and near complete silence from Cicada. Questions raised by the original image have gone ignored. What is the purpose of these puzzles? Who's behind them? What happens when you reach the end? Yeah. When the initial image appeared on 4chan <laughs> back in 2012, many assumed Cicada 3301 to be an alternate reality game designed by a corporation to promote a new service or product. For example, Microsoft developed an elaborate ARG back in 2001 to promote the film Artificial Intelligence, mm. and a similar viral marketing campaign was used to promote the release of Halo 2. I didn't know that. But the release of subsequent puzzles and the complete lack of commercialization has more or less eliminated that possibility. If we choose to believe some of the leaked information from the private end stage of each puzzle, then we do gain some insight into who this group might be. For example, I thought there would be a hacker too. Puzzle, not a hacker. Supposedly mm. received this email. In it, Cicada described themselves as an international group who believe that privacy is an inalienable right. The aim of each puzzle is to recruit like-minded individuals in an effort to develop privacy-conscious solutions. The email then concludes with three questions. The PGP signature, which would have confirmed the authenticity of the email, was conveniently removed by the leaker. If a version with a valid signature does exist online, I wasn't able to find it. But regardless of its legitimacy, I find this question a bit odd. It reads, do you believe that information mm -hmm. should be free? Assuming the expected answer is yes, then the very first sentence, <laughs> do not share this information, it seems a bit hypocritical. Yeah. While the idea of a secret society recruiting individuals by means of elaborate cryptographic puzzles may seem a bit absurd or even conspiratorial, it's not entirely unfounded. Corporations and governments alike have employed similar recruitment techniques since at least the Second World War. In 2013, the British intelligence agency GCHQ launched a recruitment program known as Can You Find It? Participants had to decrypt a number of cryptograms hidden across the internet and those who managed to solve the entire puzzle were offered a price or a position at the agency. Google did something similar with enigmatic billboards back in 2004 hmm. and the US Navy launched a near identical project in 2014. Okay, but then what about the recruits? Why have we not heard from these chosen few? Well, we have. It's just that separating a legitimate finalist from an imposter is virtually impossible. In a 2015 interview with Rolling Stone, two alleged winners of the first puzzle chronicled the events beyond the final stage. After receiving an email from Cicada, they were taken to a forum on the dark web. Here they could communicate with 20-some-odd recruits as well as a handful of established members of Cicada. They were told that Cicada 3301 had been founded by a group of friends who shared common ideals about security, privacy, and censorship. The goal was to work as a collective to develop software applications in line with that ideology. As friends recruited friends, this secret society quickly expanded into a decentralized international organization. The recruits were then tasked with to developing software that fit the ideology of the group, and members of Cicada would oversee their progress. 
but without the allure of a puzzle to be solved, the recruits quickly lost interest. Oh. By the end of 2012, all but one had left, and a few months later, the site was gone. They never heard from Cicada again. One of the two winners, named Marcus Wanner, later elaborated further in a video by YouTuber Nox Populi. Furthermore, Nox Populi himself claims to be a winner of the second puzzle, so I reached out to him and this is some of what he had to say. After completing the final stages of the second puzzle, Nox Populi received an invitation to join Cicada 3301. However, he was not invited to a website, but was instead merely told to be patient. <laughs> then, around May of 2013, all communication with Takeda abruptly ceased. This was around the same time as when the website dedicated to the winners of the first puzzle was suddenly taken down. Nox Populi later contacted other winners of the second puzzle to compare notes, and their experiences were identical. In his own huh. words, all the stories were the same. We were invited to join 3301, then something happened and silence followed a request for patience. Nox Populi supposed that roughly five others completed the second puzzle in contrast to the 20 odd winners of the first. In regards to who or what Cicada is, Nox Populi believes they could be a remnant of the cypherpunk movement of the late 80s and 90s. Essentially, a small group of activists advocating widespread use of strong cryptography and privacy-enhancing technologies, but he admits that there is no way to know for certain. If you want a far more comprehensive walkthrough of these puzzles as opposed to my brief overview, <laughs> Nox Populi has produced a number of videos on his channel which I highly recommend. While these accounts cannot be verified, they do make for a very compelling argument as to what Cicada is. A group of anonymous developers seeking to develop privacy-conscious applications by recruiting talented individuals via cryptographic puzzles. Sure, it is not nearly as exciting as a shadow government seeking world domination or mm. any of the more fantastical yeah. theories, but it is certainly more plausible. Especially if we just out. that no part of these puzzles would have required more than one person. The posters are often pointed to as evidence that this must be the work of some international organization, but I beg to differ. I mean, right now, I could use any number of services to hire random persons around yep. the globe to install yep. posters for me. Although, given that no poster was located more than an hour away from an airport leads Charles me to believe that flew. one or multiple persons actually traveled to these locations. I mean, some of the posters were found within walking distance of an international airport. The fact is that anyone with a disposable mm. income and enough time on their hands would be able to create the illusion of a vast, secret network spanning the globe. Yep. Uh, not saying that that is the case with Cicada 33-1, but it is nonetheless a possibility that cannot be discounted. Were there any ones that like, they went to the site and there's nothing there because some like took a post already? I personally think a loose-knit group of privacy-minded yeah, hobby cryptographers yeah, to be the most plausible explanation. Cicada made their last public statement in April of 2017, merely warning against this information. But the current status of the third puzzle and the possibility of a fourth remains clouded in mystery. All right, so, uh, yeah, I can't believe that we hadn't heard about that before. Um, I mean, had you? No, I, I'm, first of all, let me say, I'm so glad that, th that this was suggested. I love a good mystery. I think it's so fun to decipher puzzles, as anybody who's been on our live streams know. Yeah. Um, so the, the concept of this is very intriguing. Um, I'm glad to learn about it. I can't help but think how this style yep. is I mean, used for, for evil. Yep. I, of course I'm going to go for it. Um, and all I'm thinking of right now is QAnon and how that is permeating the American culture. And it is an evil organization that uses people's desire to solve puzzles and be intelligent because we all want to think of ourselves as intelligent. I do too. Yeah. I'm not immune from it. I want to be a genius who can solve the unsolvable puzzle. 
I'm not. You want to be like on, on the inside, like that's of what course. this kind of that's what this kind of offered. It, this offered, you know, it's like, oh, okay, like you know, you can be part of like a select group of people that like are we all highly all intelligent. We all want to feel like, special. Know. We yeah. all want to feel like the smartest person in the room. But sometimes you look at the armchair detectives, and uh, I mean, you know, it actually made a difference. I mean, who was it? A Patton Oswalt's uh, wife who helped solve that uh, the that Golden murder. State Killer. When I was a kid, scavenger hunts were a really big part of my childhood. Um, my mom would always do scavenger hunts to like hide my birthday presents and stuff oh, like that. Oh, that's fun. So she would like create a map of clues. And then if I had trouble with the clues, then it would turn into a game of like hot and cold. But I loved the clues and so they'd be hidden in like far off nooks of like a desk somewhere mm -hmm. in the house or something. Um, so I just, I love the idea of a scavenger hunt. I always will, whether it's a physical scavenger hunt or an internet one, I think this is awesome. So thank you patrons, definitely, for suggesting this. Let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments and uh, some more videos for us to check out, whether it's either by uh, Let Me Know or other channels like it. And yeah, just keep in mind our reaction to Cicada 3301 and Internet Mystery. is definitely not definitive. When you talk about things in the extremes, mm -hmm. it pushes people away. Um, one of the things that you learn about when you read psychology books is like when you uh, characterize people in the most extreme or in relationships, marriages in particular, they talked about this, where you talk about like past wrongs or things. Mm -hmm. Like you, you paint people in a way in which they feel like they're identified that way and can't be unidentified in that way. So they lean into it. 